Welcome back to chemistry. Um, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed uh, that amazing intro <laughs> that I made. Um, yeah, I'm just having fun work messing around with the video editing software. I wanted to see if I could do anything different uh, with these videos. And I thought, you know what, a good place to start would be to make a nice little intro for you. Um, the intro is a little ridiculous. <laughs> I'm sorry if it made you or if it scared you, if you had the volume on too high. Yeah, sorry about that. Anyway, um, I hope you guys are having a great Wednesday. I'm having a great Wednesday. It's actually my oldest daughter's birthday. She's nine years old today. Can't believe it. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'm having a good day. The weather here is amazing. Wherever you guys are, I hope the weather is nice for you. But the weather here for me is just pristine i mean it's 70 degrees or it's going to be 70 degrees sunny perfectly blue skies it's very nice so i hope you are also experiencing some nice weather okay let's continue our discussion of acids and bases um just like we have this um, um connection between ka and kb and, and kw you remember this so if we have k ooh, now we're red um, I don't really want to stay red. Red is kind of, it's fun, but it's not that fun. So if we multiply Ka by Kb, we end up with Kw. Remember that relationship? Okay, well, what about pKa and pKb? pKa and pKb. Remember, p, the p of anything is just the negative log of that thing, right? So... If we take, um, if we start with Ka times Kb is equal to Kw, right? And we take the log of both sides. Okay, bear with me here. It's going to be a little confusing in the beginning, but we'll just take the log of both sides. Okay, then we end up with the log of Ka plus the log of Kb due to the... Um, identity of logarithms is equal to the log of kw okay next if we take the negative of the whole thing um by the way this whole part here is equal to 14 right kw is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14 if you take the the log of that you get negative 14 oh whoops negative 14 this equals negative 14 right so I'm going to distribute that negative to the other side. So then I have negative log of Ka plus, oops, not plus, negative log of Kb is equal to, neg uh, not negative, man, goodness, is equal to 14. I distributed the negative, so there's no negative there. This side is pKa, right? This side is pKb. So that means that pKa plus pKb is equal to 14. Wow, that's pretty cool. Okay, so, th and this, this um, what we're talking about here, just like we're talking about the Ka and Kb of conjugate acid-base pair, right? For example, acetic acid and acetate. Um, if you look at the pKa and the pKb of a conjugate acid-base pair, um, they will be equal to 14. They will sum to 14. Interesting, right? So that's a uh, that's another little um, relationship that we can remember and use uh, when it is convenient. Anybody having coffee or tea this morning? I am having a, a green chai tea. It's quite yummy. Okay. Um, <clears throat> right. Let's talk a little bit about cations as weak acids. We talked about anions as weak bases. Let's talk about cations as weak acids. So if we have a strong base, 
for example, sodium hydroxide, right? This is a strong base or calcium hydroxide. Yeah, these are strong bases. Um, if we consider the counter ion, the counter cation of this strong base, um, when we put it into solution, what happens is we get sodium plus and OH minus, right? The sodium plus is the counter cation, right? And the counter cation of or sodium has no effect on pH. It is pH neutral. Okay, so that means that the counter ions of strong bases or the cations of strong bases are pH neutral. Just like the anions of strong bases or of strong acids are pH neutral. What about the conjugate acids of weak bases? Okay, the conjugate acids of weak bases. If we have, for example, ammonium or ammonia, excuse me, this is the base. Conjugate acid would be ammonium. Okay, um, and this is an acid. When when we put ammonia or ammonium into a solution as part of an ionic salt, okay, it will lower the pH. For example, if we have ammonium chloride, which is a very common salt, NH4Cl, and we put it into solution, we get some NH4 plus and some Cl minus. Okay. Actually, this is not really a equilibrium. Um, ammonium chloride is, is very soluble in water, so it'll completely come apart. Um, the ammonium here acts as an acid. The chloride, which is the counter ion of a strong acid, is pH neutral. So that means that this solution will be acidic. Okay. When you make a solution of ammonium chloride, you get an, an acidic solution. And um, we can figure out the, we can determine the Ka or the Kb uh, depending on the information that we know. So for example, NH4 plus reacts with water to form um, NH3 and H2, or excuse me, H3O plus. Okay, and in this case, uh, we want the Ka, or we have the Ka of NH4, um, or if we have the information about ammonia reacting with water. <clears throat> to form ammonium and OH minus, we have information about the Kb. Okay, so it depends on which one you have information about. And remember, uh, you can always find the other by using the relationship Ka times Kb is equal to um, Kw. Or pKa plus pKb is equal to 14. Okay, they're both pretty much the same thing. Um, yeah, it just depends on you determining which one is easier for you to use. Okay, uh, another thing that can act as an acid are small, highly charged metals.
For example, aluminum, three plus, iron, three plus, and there's a, there's a few others. These form weakly acidic solutions, okay? So if you have aluminum, three plus reacting with six waters, you end up with aluminum, H2O, six, three plus, okay? Now aluminum, H2O, six, three plus, Whoops. Three plus reacts with an additional water to form aluminum H2O6 OH2 plus plus H3O. Okay, uh, and so this makes the solution slightly acidic, and that means that this guy here acts as a Bronsted-Lowry acid. And some metals do this, um, some metals don't. Groups 1A and 2A do not do this. Okay. Groups 1A and 2A do not do this. So we have a bunch of different ways that we can get an acidic or basic solution. And what we want to do now is come up with a way of classifying a salt solution as acidic or basic. Okay. Okay. If we want to classify the salt solution as acidic or basic, uh, we have to consider the specific cations or anions that are present in the solution, and the pH will be dependent upon, upon the um, identity of those cations and anions in solution. Okay, so we can go through a somewhat of a scheme or a flow chart to determine what the pH of the solution will be. Okay, so the first case, neither the cation nor the anion act as an acid or base. <clears throat> nor anion act as acid or base. Okay, in this case, it's pH neutral. For example, sodium chloride. Um, another example, calcium nitrate. Another example, potassium bromide. Okay, etc., etc. There are many salt solutions that have no effect on the pH, and that's because they're formed out of cations and anions that are counter ions to strong acids and bases. Okay, remember this is sodium hydroxide's counter ion. This is hydrochloric acid's counter ion. This is potassium hydroxide's counter ion. This is uh, hydrobromic acid's counter ion, et cetera, et cetera. When you have a counter ion to a strong acid or a base, the, um, the counter ion acts as neither an acid nor a base and is always pH neutral. So if you form your total compound out of these cations or anions, uh, your final solution will also be completely neutral. Okay, so that's the first case. Second case, <clears throat> the cation is not acting as the acid, but anion is a base. What happens here? Um, that means that the pH is basic. So some examples here, um, for example, sodium fluoride, right? The anion is acting as a base. Um, it wants to gobble up hydrogens from the water and it will. 
So it's grabbing those hydrogens away and leaving OH minus behind. So it's acting as a base. Uh, calcium acetate is another example. Okay, that anion um, acetate um, wants to get some of its some of it um, protonated with uh, hydrogen. So it peels that hydrogen off of some of the waters and it acts as a base. Uh, another example is potassium nitrite. Okay. Third case is the cation or the anion is an acid. Uh, is not an acid. Wait a minute. No, 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 no. Blah, 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 blah. Erase, erase, rewind. Blah, 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 blah. The third case, the cation is an acid. <laughs> oh, struggling this morning. Okay. The third case, the cation is an acid. There we go. But the anion is not a base. Okay, in this case, the solution is acidic. Okay, the solution is acidic. Uh, some examples of this um, ammonium chloride, pretty much any salt made with ammonium uh, would, would have this. So, ammonium chloride, ammonium bromide. Um, <clears throat> aluminum nitrate is another example. Iron chloride is an example. Okay, so in these cases, the cation, the aluminum, the iron, and the ammonium are all acting as an acid and therefore they're shifting the pH of the solution to be acidic. And the fourth and final case is that both the cation and the anion are acting as acid and base. So the cation is an acid. And the anion is a base. The pH of this case um, depends entirely on the strengths of the acid and the base. Okay, depends on the strength of the acid versus the base. Um, for example, if you have ammonium nitrite, Okay, both of these can act as acid. The ammonium can act as an acid. The nitrite can act as a base. Iron fluoride, iron three fluoride, um, aluminum acetate. Okay, all of these, both ions can act as either an acid or a base. And so in this case, it depends on the relative strengths of the acid versus the base. And to figure this out, you need to compare the Ka and the Kb. And whichever K is larger determines the, K, the pH. Okay, whichever K is larger determines the pH. Let's do an example. Um, if I made a solution of NaCH, O2, which is sodium formate, or as I like to refer to it, nachos. <laughs> nachos are delicious. Do you guys like nachos? I really like nachos. I like nachos with like um, cheddar cheese that's just just melty and some taco meat and some jalapenos uh, and salsa and sour cream. 
And if it's available, guacamole. Basically, I like nachos with everything on it. Nachos are very good. Okay, so <laughs> back to the problem. Uh, this is sodium formate. Um, when we put this into solution, it breaks up into sodium and formate. Okay, we get, uh, actually we get two of these. Um, this, of course, sodium is pH neutral, right? So it's not gonna do anything to the solution. Um, the formate is basic. Um, so all this solution would be completely determined by the formate, right? So this would be a pH basic solution, right? Okay, let's do another example. Let's do an example with um, both cation and anion are contributing to the basicity or acidity of the solution. So if we look at something like ammonium fluoride, mm -hmm. ammonium fluoride, when we split this up, we get ammonium plus, when we dissolve it into solution, we get ammonium plus and fluoride minus, ammonium plus acts as an acid. The fluoride acts as base, okay? Um, so we have, for example, ammonium, NH4 plus reacting with H2O to form NH3 and o, uh, H3O plus, right? And on the fluoride side, we have fluoride reacting with water to form um, <clears throat> HF and OH minus. Okay, so we have uh, two guys here, two, two things that we need to compare. We need to look at the Ka for this guy up top, and we need to look at the Kb for this guy down here. Whichever one is larger determines the acidity or basicity of the solution. Okay, let's look at the Ka first. The Ka is equal to Kw divided by Kb of ammonium, or ammonia, okay? And this is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14, of course, divided by 1.76 times 10 to the minus 5. And that ends up equaling 5.68 times 10 to the minus 10. Okay, and then we have Kb. Kb is equal to Kw over Ka of Hf. And in this case, we have 1.00 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by 3.5 times 10 to the minus four. And that equals to 2.9 times 10 to the minus 11. Now we can compare the two. We see that the Ka is bigger than the Kb by a, more than a factor of 10. So it's more than 10 times larger. So therefore, Ka is greater than Kb, which means that this solution of ammonium fluoride would be an acidic solution. Okay, the Ka wins out. Uh, we end up with an acidic solution. Okay, um, let's see. I think I'm going to pause there and we will get back to this in part two. I'll uh, see you then. Make sure you get some snacks. Um, yeah, get a, get a nice uh, stretch. Maybe run around the neighborhood a few times. Scream to the heavens in, in frustration. <laughs> you know, all the, all the normal stuff that everyone should do every morning.